All right, let's do some math for satellite motion. When a satellite orbits around a planet or a moon or a star, and it's a circular orbit, we can do the math of this pretty simply using things that we've learned in this unit. For instance, we know that if this is moving in a circular orbit around this, there must be a force pointing towards the center of the circle, which is our centripetal force. Now, what actual force is being the centripetal force in this situation? Well, it's gravity. So if I were to look at my generic equation for centripetal force and the equation for the force of gravity, I can combine these together to create some equations that help us with satellites. What I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the right-hand side of this equation into the left-hand side of the top equation. And I get that big G m1 m2 over r squared equals m v squared over r. Now you notice we have multiple m's. In the case of a satellite, I want to distinguish that one of the masses is the big mass of, say, the planet or star or moon that's being orbited, and the other is the mass of the satellite. So I'm going to make a quick little adjustment here, and I'm going to call this big M and little m. Big M is the mass of maybe the planet, and little m is the mass of the satellite. And if I do that, you can see right away that the mass of the satellite just cancels right out. Also, if you notice, if I'm going to solve this for V, I'm going to wind up with G big mass over R times R, excuse me, over R squared, and we're going to get the canceling of one of the R's. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get my final equation, which is the speed of a satellite is the square root of big G times the mass that is being orbited over the radius. This is an equation that you will use on your worksheets. And you can see it comes right from the equations that we've learned in this unit. Now, another equation that's helpful is an equation that looks at the time it takes to go around once, which we call the period of orbit. And the period of orbit can be gotten from the equation that we created over here by remembering that the speed of something that goes in a circle is 2 pi times the radius, in other words, the circumference, over the time it takes to go around once. I'm going to go ahead and put that in to this equation and solve for t. In order to do that, uh, there's a there's a quick and dirty way to do it. I'm going to do it the long way just so uh, I don't confuse anybody. But I'm going to square both sides. I'm going to get 4 pi squared r squared over t squared equals big G m over r. And I'm going to move, I'm going to cross multiply so I get t squared g big m equals 4 pi squared r cubed and then solving for big T, and finally take the square root. Now, I kind of hate to see the 4 and the pi squared under a square root, so I'm going to take it one step further, bring them out, take the square root of both of those terms, and I wind up with the formula that you would see in any textbook for the period of a satellite. I want to scroll back up and look at the speed of the satellite equation real quickly. One of the things that you can see here is that there's a lot of constants here. Big G is a constant. The mass of the planet is also a constant. The only thing that really is a variable here is the speed and the radius. And what you can see here is that if I were to uh, increase the radius or the distance away that a satellite is, it's actually going to slow it down. It's going to move slower if it's further away. When I go back to my period equation, you can see that the further away I go, since the r is on the top, uh, the m longer it takes to go around. Okay, That's the reason why uh, the planets behave the way they do. Mercury has the shortest period of all of our planets in our solar system, and it just gets bigger as you go further out. Using these equations is simply a matter of solving them for the quantity you want to know, and then plugging in everything else. One thing that's important to remember, though, is that the big M in these equations is the mass of the thing being orbited, 
the mass of the satellite itself is inconsequential. It does not matter. One thing that's also important about these type of problems is that quite often, instead of being given the radius for the problem, you will be told how far above the surface the satellite is orbiting. Now, the radius is the distance from the outside of the circle to the very center of the circle. So, if this is a planet, we have to have the radius of the planet included in that value for the radius. The radius that goes into the equation is the radius of the planet plus the height or altitude.